Well, good morning, folks, and welcome to Portland. And um, I'm currently looking at Chesil Beach with Weymouth off into the distance and Portland sort of town just down here in front of me. So what I've come out here to do today is to firstly shoot this Chesil Beach, uh, which I've never done before, but I've seen lots of good photos of it. I've just never sort of come out and taken my own. And what I'm quite liking today is there is some dappled light about and when the light does hit the beach, the sort of golden pebbles that are on, on it sort of just come to life really. And it disappears off into the mist because um, it has been quite misty on the way down here, but they, the beach just disappears off into the into the mist. So I'm hoping to sort of capture this and that sort of curve round of the uh, of the beach itself. So that's what I've come out here to try and photograph today. But I've come out here to really try and persuade you guys that are thinking about 4x5, perhaps sat on that fence, don't know whether to get into it or not, maybe sort of a bit like, oh, is it going to help me? Is it not? It's quite, is it quite expensive? All that sort of thing. And I want to try and persuade you guys to leap off that fence and come and join us in the 4x5 community, because I think there's a lot of benefits to 4x5 that can help you with your photography and your understanding of photography perhaps you've been doing it a few years and you've only been used to digital and um, you sort of know that you turn your camera on you can sort of shoot in manual you can shoot in um, aperture priority but you don't quite understand everything that goes in that and where it's sort of come from um, obviously a lot of that's come from the film cameras that they've progressed through the years and i want to try and sort of persuade you guys to jump off that fence and come and join us and uh, it's my uh, sort of views on why I think 4x5 photography can help you guys improve your photography um, even with digital and whatever other camera you, you pick up. So I'm going to get on now and set this up. I'm going to hope for a bit of light. It is grey overhead. I am shooting black and white today. I've got a new film with me today but I'm going to do a slightly separate video once I've shot it and I've um, I've developed it and you know just seen what it's like really but I'm shooting Mummy 400 um, which like I said I will do another video on that but I have got uh, four sheets with me of that today and I've got one sheet left of uh, Delta 100 which I'm going to shoot also today so I'm going to set up here for this shot I'm going to probably take a couple of exposures here and then I'm going to head on down to uh, Portland Bill, which is the lighthouse at the end of Portland, which is where I was heading originally this morning. Uh, it was only when I was driving up the hill, I just caught a glimpse of the beach with the light on it and it just looked beautiful. So I thought I'd stop here and try and get a shot of this. So I'm going to get set up now and I'll see you guys in a minute. While I'm just waiting for some light, I just thought I'd talk you through the first thing on my list of things that I think will improve your general photography by making the plunge of a 4x5 photography and that is the fact that it will slow you down it will slow you down massively it will make you think about shots a lot more before you take them now what i mean by that is today i've got three uh, film holders which technically means i've got six shots and that's it now i've already used a, um, a sheet of delta 400 on a, a delta 100 on a different shoot so i've got one on this side that haven't been used and two film holders that i've not used the film in these yet so i've got five shots with me today and that's it so what it makes you do is it makes you approach a scene differently obviously when i'm shooting with digital which i do shoot with digital I'll come here and I'll probably take, I mean, obviously before I had any of this and I went into large format photography, I would have come here and I would have probably have taken maybe 30 shots of this scene in front of me, uh, just riding the shutter, um, you know, as the light changes, riding the shutter. And that is a, definitely a benefit of shooting digital. But I think sometimes it just puts you in that mindset as, oh, it doesn't matter. You've got a card with 128 megabyte or 250 or whatever it is. I can fit thousands of images on that. I'm just going to rack a load of images off here. And then I'm going to shoot some of this and that and the other. And you just, you sort of lose sense of focus, I think. And I think that that is definitely what this brings to the table, to the party, is the fact that I've got five shots. I've really got to think about my composition. I've got to think about do I like the scene in front of me? I've got to visualize what it's going to look like because I can't 
look at what the shot looks like after I've taken it until I've gone home and de developed it. So you've got to have that sort of pre-visualization of what a shot would look like. And yes, you have to have that when you're shooting digital, of course you do. Um, but I think that this helps home that in, helps home it in. So that is definitely the first thing on the list is the fact that large format photography slows you down uh, it makes you think more about what you're shooting um, and will definitely help your compositional setups and it will just change your mindset in all the rest of your photography after you've been doing this for a while you you take this sort of slowed down approach onto digital 35 mil film medium format whatever else you're shooting um, it definitely helps in that way so that is the first thing on the list okay so this is the first shot set up i've opted to go with the delta 100 um and what i've done is i'm going to shoot this at f11 and because it gives me a shutter speed of about 60 of a second and i don't know if you can hear from uh the the audio there that there is a bit of wind up here so i've put the 30 um the 135 mil lens on this uh, so the bellows are sort of squeezed up somewhat um, which means that they're probably not catching the wind quite as much as they would do normally uh, but there definitely is some some movement in there i can see it on the bellows um, just with the wind so i've sort of that's why i've opted with f11 and gone for 60th of a second um, i'm sort of focusing down here um, in the sort of the the foreground so to speak and i'm not too fussed that the rest of it sort of disappears slowly off um, a sort of out of focus i suppose because of the mist that's here so i'm literally now just waiting for the light that i had earlier to come back uh, which i could be stood here a while because behind the camera uh, the mist has just rolled in and it's coming down the side of the uh starting to come down the side of this sort of cliff edge now so um yeah i'm just waiting for light now and that's it story of my life story of all our lives let's be honest um yeah, so just a waiting game now. Okay, so I think this might be my uh, chance for the shot now because the uh, sun is just uh, just there and it's casting some light down onto the beach. So I'm just going to do the normal checks, make sure the aperture blades are closed, which they are. Um, I've already done a test shot, so I'm ready to go. So I'm going to take the slide out. I'm just going to shield the... Um, the camera best I can there is some shake there I'm not too fussed about the light no right I'm gonna get this shot taken that's it first shot in the bag that sounded very uneventful I'm gonna be honest but uh, make sure I put that in the right way which like I keep saying to me is white side facing out once I've shown it the light that's just the way my head works I know convention sort of says that it should be the other way but I like that. Right, as the light's looking really nice at the moment, I'm going to get the mummy out. And I'm going to try a uh, sheet of this now. Let's put that in there. Obviously, I've got to change the settings now. Because we are dealing with a 400 ISO film, which is going to give me a few more options. So I'm going to go F16. Hundred and twenty-fifth of a second. Let's put that up there. Right, just do a test shot. All good. Like I say, I'm shooting at a um, a higher sort of shutter speed um, and a lower aperture um, because, like I say, right to get the shot taken. There we go. So, right, that's two shots taken here. Um, although this is absolutely looking beautiful, I might take a couple of images on, on, the, on the digital camera and then I'm going to move on to Portland Bill um, and see what I can get around there because hopefully this mist, this sort of sea mist that's rolling in now is over there as well. And with the lighthouse and everything, that might look quite nice. So I'm going to get um, packed up now. I'm going to take a couple of shots on that, get packed up and get moved on. So I'll see you guys around at Portland.
Okay, so I'm now set up at the next location. But before I go through all of that, what I want to do is talk about the next thing on the list of things that I think will help your photography by getting a large format camera. And that is in-field creative control. Now, what I mean by that is these, la these large format cameras have lots of movement options um, to give you more creative control actually out in the field and get the shot that you're looking for actually here in the field rather than going back and sitting behind a desk for hours trying to adjust dirty things in Photoshop. If you're like me, I prefer to try and get the shot right out here and spend less time in front of the desk. So I just want to go through some of the options you've got with these cameras and mainly looking at the Intrepid here. Different cameras will do slightly different things, but in principle, they will all do the same thing, just in maybe some of them in a slightly different way. So these cameras, if we start with the front standard, what you can do is you have the option of rise and fall with the lens. You've also got something called shift, which is where you move the lens from side to side. You also have swing, where you swing the lens from side to side. You also have what is called tilts, and tilts is where, on this camera, it was is done via the um, via the centre of the lens. Other cameras will be done by the bottom, and what that means is basically you can tilt the lens forward or back, like that. Like I say, some cameras will do it via the the bottom. This one does it from the center of the lens. What you've also got on this camera is t the option of tilts on the rear standard also, where you can move it backwards and forward to get your desired effect. Some cameras will also have things like uh, shift and things like that on the rear standard, but on the Intrepid, you've just got the option of tilts on the rear and pretty much full movement on the front. Now, what that helps you with is Take a building, for instance, so you're shooting a building, and obviously the building's got nice straight lines, or the building you're shooting's got nice straight lines. Now, normally with a digital camera, or a 35mm camera, or even, or just a camera with a standard lens, a wide angle lens normally you might be using, you might, because you're close to it, sort of tilt the lens upwards to try and get the whole building in shot. Now, what happens when you do that is you distort the image, so you distort the vertical line so they look like they're going outwards now you might like that that might be what you're looking for and that's fine you can do that with this camera no problem but if you're looking for straight lines then what you can do is adjust your lens and do the movements you need to get them lines nice and straight um, like the actual lighthouse i'm going to take in a minute i may have to introduce some of that to make sure that the lighthouse is standing up straight and not looking like it's bending into the shot i know where you can do that in photoshop but like i say if you're looking to get things right in camera and perhaps understand more uh you know things like the principle of um of uh, depth of field and just what happens when you start to introduce tilts and swings and all that sort of thing into your photo how it changes the uh, the depth of field and where the focusing plane is all of this sort of thing here will help you massively understand how that all works and aid you i think in your photography journey so that is the next thing on the list of things that i think will help you in your photography journey by having one of these so I'm all set up now. I've uh, metered in. I'm going to go with f22 and a third, which is giving me um, 250th of a second. I've already test fired the shot. I'm already focused in. I've used a little bit of uh, lens rise just to sort of frame my scene sort of upright, uh, you know, just to make sure I'm getting the right, right balance between the sea and, and, and the sky. And uh, yeah, we're going to try this mummy now. I've got the mummy 400 in, uh, which is giving me the fastest shutter speed because obviously it's a 400 speed film. So I'm going to get on now and shoot this and uh, hopefully this shot comes out. OK, so the film's in. Just do the usual checks. Blades are closed. Shutter speed's right. Aperture's right. All good to go. Cock the shutter. There's a little bit of wind about, which is a little bit frustrating. The sun is sort of over here, so hopefully I'm not going to get any flare. Right, let's get on and take this shot. That's it, first shot of the lighthouse in the bag. Right, I've now got two shots left. Um, I think because I've shot this lighthouse loads before, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to some buildings that are just sort of behind the camera 
and I'm going to sort of walk around there and see what, if I can uh, take my last two shots up there. There's a nice boat sort of set up and uh, just some nice sort of wooden buildings um, in and amongst sort of an old building that's there. So I'm going to get on and uh, pack this away now and I'm going to move over there and yeah, we'll see what we can get from there. Okay, so this next one on the list isn't so much an improvement to your photography, but more of a sort of, um, you know, just to ease your mind, I suppose. So large format photography, um, the, there's a few film choices out there you can use, um, and the actual image quality that you get from 4x5, uh, 5x7, uh, 8x10, is just phenomenal. It, it more than stands up against the 60 megapixel sensors and, and above that you get on a modern uh, digital uh, camera. Obviously, it's gonna give you a slightly different look, but in terms of sharpness and what the, the film actually captures, what it renders, is just unbelievable. So if you're worried about image quality with film, don't be. Um, the actual uh, image you get from a large format camera, even a 4x5 camera, is absolutely mind-blowing. And if you are worried about aspect ratios and want to be able to crop in and you know maybe make a pano out of a 4x5 or like say 5x7 or 8x10, easily done and you'll get more than enough detail from the image you get back to be able to crop um, by quite some, some way. So if that's in your back of your mind, don't worry about it. Image quality on these, absolutely fantastic. What I want to do is talk you through the next um, shot that I've got in mind here um, with the Mummy 400, which I don't know if I mentioned it, it's black and white film. Um, so I've always loved this boat and this sort of building here and the old lighthouses is in the background. And I've never, I've been here and caught it on 35mm film before and digital, but I've never ever bought my 4x5 here and shot this. I've always shot, shot the, uh, the main event, which is the, uh, the lighthouse itself. So what I'm looking to get is the boat, the, um, uh, the building there, and then the lighthouse in the background, all in the same image here, and this little bit of a wall here, which just looks beautiful. So I'm going to sort of focus in through this now and um, see what we can get with it. I'm all set up now um, and I'm just about to take one of my shots here. I'm going to take one in portrait and one in landscape orientation. I've metered in and I'm going to go with F64, which has given me 30th of a second. Um, it's just to help with that depth of field. I played around with the lens a little bit just to sort of help with that. Um, but I'm going to go with F, um, F64, 30th of a second and see what that gives us. So I'm going to load this up now. I've just got two people walking into the frame, or well, actually I think they're off for the frame, so I'm gonna do the usual things, check the blades are closed, which they are. I've already done a test shot, so I'm all ready to go. So I'm gonna take this before anyone else gets into the frame. I'm gonna shield the, the lens because the sun is just sort of behind me and just get to where it needs to be, there. Right, let's get this shot taken. That's it, first shot of that taken. Really excited about that one. And like I say, I'm going to switch it around now. I'm going to recompose this to be a portrait orientation. And I'm just going to recompose this now and then take this last shot. Okay, so I'm all set up now just to take this last shot in a portrait orientation. Um, I think this does work. What I've done is I've cut off the boat from sort of just past the, um, the T there. So I'm missing sort of the front half of the boat. I've got the front half of the building and then just the lighthouse in the background, which I'm really liking. I'm gonna do, do this at um, uh, F64, again, 30 per second. And uh, yeah, just make sure blades are closed. Um, shutter's cocked, already done a test shot. So I'm gonna take the slide out, shield the lens again, and get this last shot taken. Beautiful. So that's it for my uh, sheets of film. That is uh, five shots taken today. Um, and I'm really excited about these today, especially the uh, the first couple I took at um, Chisel Beach. That um, I was really excited about the, the mist and just the dappled light on the actual uh, uh, the scene itself. It looked really nice. So I'm really happy with that. Really happy with this shot here. The, the lighthouse, I shot it loads of times before. Um, hopefully they'll come out okay, which I'm sure they will do, but I'm more excited about this sort of scene here, um, which is something a tiny bit different, 
uh, from round this sort of peninsula, although I'm sure this has been shot a million times before or so. So I'm going to get packed up and I'm going to come back to sort of go through um, my last thing that I think um, will aid you guys, if you've got a large format uh, camera, will aid you guys in your photography. So the next thing on the list of reasons why I would recommend getting a 4x5 camera if you are just sat on that fence is the fact that you're not just limited to 4x5. If you shoot a larger format like 8x10 or uh, 5x7, you can get um, backs that reduce it down to 4x5. But if you're shooting a 4x5 camera, you get also get the option then of adding on um, medium format backs to your large format camera so you can shoot medium format film now the reasons why you'd want to do that is firstly it's cheaper it is cheaper to shoot uh, large form uh, medium format um, film over large format film you still get a great quality image uh, from shooting a slightly smaller negative um, and it's available you can get backs of relatively cheap I mean a 6x7 back is about between 80 and 100 pound in the UK uh, for my 4x5 so you can shoot 6x7 um, you can shoot 6x17 you can shoot 6x14 6x12 6x6 6x9 and so on and so forth you can also get instant film uh, backs for it so you can get the older discontinued uh, polaroid film which um, unfortunately the film is really expensive you don't make it anymore so you're you're having to buy expired uh, film and take your chances with that so i've stayed away from that or you can get lomography's back which is an instant film back which shoots the fuji instax range of wider format um format sort of sheets if that want for a better word but you can also add that to your back so that is another reason why you're not just limited to 4x5 there is uh, loads of accessories out there to shoot different film sizes and also like I say with that medium format it does open up a lot more choice mainly in colour um, as, as well as black and white but mainly in colour which unfortunately is a bit lacking on the 4x5 front but that is another reason why a uh, 4x5 camera is a good option. Okay, so let's wrap this video up with the last sort of uh, positive for the uh, to, for shooting large format photography, and I think personally um, a definite bonus is that you are going to understand or better understand the exposure triangle by shooting large format photography I mean that is film in general but definitely with large format photography because you're gonna to have to use a light meter to read the scene unless you use a light you can use an app on your phone but when you get into it you're gonna to want to get a proper light meter and reading the scene and working out where you want those uh, those sort of that light to fall on the on the chart that you're going to be using and it just helps you better understand the um, relationship between shutter speed aperture and ISO um, you're going to be restricted ISO wise by the film you're you're using you can push it you can pull it but there's only so far you can go with that before the the film starts to to fall apart uh, with the shot so that is a definite plus that you're going to better understand um, the exposure triangle and how each one affects them I'm sure everybody out there has got a an understanding of it but you really home into it with 4x5 uh, photography and generally film photography in, in general but 4x5 so there is that there is some negatives that we need to mention so I touched on it earlier film choice is a bit of a disappointment at the moment there's quite a few um, options when it comes to black and white Ilford make a lot of film um, and there is lots of other companies out there that, that do do black and white 4x5 um, but in terms of colour you're going to be limited and you're going to be stuck with Kodak and they do an extra chrome 100 and they do the liner portrait and that is about your lot and those colour films are very very expensive but like I say what you can do to sort of help with that cost or open up that options uh, more options to you in in on the color side of things is look at a um a medium format back for your four by five uh, just will open up that a bit more and if the you know medium format will give you a great looking looking uh, image so there's that and then the other negative of course to talk about is the fact that you can shoot a 4x5 handheld i don't really recommend it but it can be done uh, with a highest iso film you can shoot handheld um, but mainly you're going to be restricted to a tripod um, and you're going to rule out really sports and wildlife and anything with fast moving where you're looking to pan an image or chase or sort of follow something around the scene you are not going to be able to do that really with 4x5 um, 
sort of 4x5 film or 4x5 camera because it's not um, you know it's not the fastest to adjust uh, focus and all that sort of thing so it's definitely uh, sports and wildlife and um, action shots that sort of thing you're going to struggle with a 4x5 camera 4x5 camera is more for a sort of maybe a still a life sort of image you want to take like a landscape like this or you might be looking to do some product photography or something like that um, where it's probably better suited than being handheld and trying to do sports and action with it so really that's it really uh negative wise um, from from my point of view um like i say you are going to get some frustrations as well um you know four back, large four back photography can be extremely frustrating if it's not quite it's not quite your day it's not quite going well uh, it can be frustrating but they are once in a blue moon when you get back and you get that shot and everything you know everything out sort of in the field has gone right you've focused in the weather's been nice you've sort of zoned in on what what you want and you take that image and then you get it back develop it and it's a beautifully sharp well composed uh, image you are just going to feel on top of the world because it's just an amazing feeling to get that uh, negative back and see your image having everything gone right so you get more of those days than you do bad days so yeah don't worry about the bad days they happen but you are going to get a lot more good days where you feel amazing than the bad days so there's that the other things just to bear in mind quickly are the fact that it doesn't like rain and it doesn't like wind so you're going to have to take a brolly with you if you're planning to go shoot in the rain and with the wind you're going to have to find somewhere shielding it or just stay away from trying to shoot in a gale and that sort of thing because uh, like i say bellows and wind don't go together very well at all um, so that's the only other thing so that's it for this video um, i hope you've enjoyed this one if you have please leave a like to it um, and a subscription to the channel would be absolutely amazing both of them they just mean the world to me when people do that i really really appreciate it and it sort of spurs me on to make more and more videos and content for you guys um, and talking about content i am going to glastonbury in a couple of days time and i cannot wait to uh, shoot i've got loads of rolls of 35 mil film for my Besser r2 and i'm also going to take my 4x5 camera with some sheets of 4x5 and mainly my 6x17 because i've got an image in my head that i want to take uh, while i'm there so i'm looking to do some video while i'm there and uh, take some images as well i can't wait to share that guy uh, that's that content with you guys so anyway thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed this one I'll see you guys again. Bye for now.